Hey everyone, it's Kneecap here, and this video is going to be a guide for the third boss in Tomb of Sargeras, at least by the Dungeon Journal Guide, Harjatan. This is for Heroic and Normal. The fight is exactly the same, except for the damage is a little bit higher on Heroic. First of all, I'm just going to go through and kind of give you a rundown of the fight really quick, a very fast version, then I'll break down all the abilities individually. So basically, you want to just have your raid position in this way. Have your tanks stacked with your ranged DPS and healers directly in front of the boss, and your melee DPS behind the boss. He's going to use an ability called Unchecked Rage. When he uses that, have your melee DPS run in front of the boss and help soak that with the rest of the raid. This is just going to happen over and over again throughout the fight, and you just want to keep repeating it. He's also going to be summoning Murlocs. If you're targeted by a Murloc, specifically fixated, you want to make sure that if you're the melee DPS, you go ahead and bring that over to uh, the ranged DPS and tanks. Uh, you technically don't have to because the melee can probably cleave it down. Uh, so you, that's actually up to your raid. Uh, this just makes it easier to have them all stacked in one spot. Uh, everyone can also just kind of run in front of the boss if you want to for that as well, just so all the Murlocs are in one spot and they're all getting cleaved down. These Murlocs will be doing uh, a little bit of damage, and the most important thing would be Aqueous Burst, which is what the Razor Jaw uh, Wave Mender might put on you. Aqueous Burst, when you have that, you want to make sure you get out of the raid because you're going to drop a pool of water on the ground. These pools of water are important because they're going to strengthen the boss as the fight goes on, and there's going to be more and more waters as the fight goes on, potentially. So you want to make sure that you're dropping those uh, effectively out of the raid, and um, <laughs> possibly having to move the boss later on if people are putting bad placement on the waters. Uh, other than that, he's basically just going to uh, draw in the water occasionally, increasing his damage done, and... <clears throat> Uh, his damage done, and obviously you want to make sure you don't stand in the water. Think Nathendra and Normal Nightmare bringing in all the poison and toxic stuff on the ground when she's sleeping, except for he's still fighting during this phase, and they make him stronger. There's nothing you can do about him soaking up the waters. It's uh, just an unavoidable thing. Just kill the Murlocs fast enough to where they're not dropping a bunch of water on the ground, and you'll be fine. Um, other than that, he does do a Frosty Discharge, which will remove all the stacks of the Drench debuff, which will be on pretty much everybody at some point, although everyone's going to be stacked um, if you do the fight this way, so it's really easy to heal through, uh, and it's not really an issue at all. Okay, so that's kind of the fight, uh, really simply put, and it is that simple. However, now I'll go through and break down the abilities. Uh, he has abrasive armor, which basically is a tank ability, and hitting him as a tank, you have a chance to get Jagged Abrasion. Uh, Jagged Abrasion is a bleeding dot. Um, it lasts for 30 seconds, and it stacks, so uh, you'll want to... Uh, accordingly plan with your tanks whether uh, you want to switch every three stacks five stacks seven stacks six stacks you know it's up to you completely uh, whatever your tank can handle one stack uh, ticks for about 240k DPS on the tank so that's not very much and then that's just going to uh, double every time or not double every time but add 240k per second on every time uh, you get a new stack so uh, once you're over a million a second you know that's probably a good time to have a taunt swap, but again, it's you have self healing. It's whatever whatever your your uh, group wants to do. As I said, he's going to be casting unchecked rage. This ability is very easy to uh, negate. You just all stack up. He's going to do like a cone in front of him. The damage. He's then commanding roar. His ability is going to use fairly often to summon the two different types of murlocs. Uh, we went over what the wave mender's main ability is, which is aqueous burst, which is going to eventually put those pools of water on the ground. These things are also going to be causing you to have the drenched debuff on you with uh, different types of abilities, uh, including stepping in the water on the ground, the drenching pools, or the drenching waters on the ground, that will also put a stack of that debuff on you as well. The Gladiator, his big thing that he does differently is he has a cleave and he will fixate one target. Again, this is not a big issue. As long as everyone's stacked up, um, you're going to be able to heal through this and you should kill them extremely fast, also limiting the amount of, uh, the amount of puddles on the ground. At some point, he's going to cast a draw in, and he's going to draw in all the puddles that are on the ground. Uh, you demand to make sure you don't step in these puddles while they're uh, being drawn in. Uh, you can, uh, If you put the puddles to the left and right of the boss, you'll never have to worry about it because melee are behind you and everyone else is in front. And you'll never really have to worry about it. You can just continue fighting uh, as it goes, and that makes it really easy. As he gets more waters, he's going to do more damage uh, per swing. It's going to go down every swing, though, however... Um, and then he's going to be dropping more waters on the ground uh, from the ones that he uh, picked up. Um, so there, as you can see, so he's going to be dropping basically the ones that he picked up, and then the Murlocs are going to come again, they're going to put more on the ground. So the fight is going to get more and more waters the longer it takes, so you do want to make it as fast as possible. Um, then other than that, he just has a Frosty Discharge, uh, which just takes the stacks of Drenched off of everyone in the raid. 
Again, this fight is really easy. I'm, I might sound a little bit rushed during this guide, uh, but it is that easy. If you do have any questions, you feel free to comment below. I'd love to uh, answer them for you. This fight's really easy. It's kind of fun. It's a good AoE fight, so if you're an AoE class, that's good for you. Um, other than that, everyone have a good one.